Hey everyone, today we're going to look at question 4 from the 2017 MAT exam. The question starts off by telling us that a horse is attached by a rope to the corner of a square field of side length 1. And for part i, we need to work out what length of rope allows the horse to reach precisely half the area of that field. So I've drawn out the square field with side length 1. This means the total area is going to be 1. And we need to work out the length of the rope, I've called it L, such that this region here is equal to half, which is half the area of the region. So we want one half to be equal to this area here, and this is a quarter of a circle. So if we use the area, the equation for the area of a circle, which is pi r squared, which is l squared in this case, and that's the area for a whole circle, but we've got a quarter of a circle, so I'm just going to divide here by 4. Now my, if I multiply by 4 on both sides and divide by pi, I get l squared equals 2 over pi. Taking the square root, we get l equals the square root of 2 over pi. And this is the length of the rope. Now we're told that another horse is placed in the field, attached to the corner diagonally opposite from the first horse. Each horse has a length of rope that we just calculated in the first part, which is the square root of 2 over pi. And for part ii, we need to explain why the area that both can reach is the same as the area that neither can reach. So now this is our setup. We have a square of length 1 and horse 1 in the bottom left corner and horse 2 diagonally opposite in the top right hand corner. They both have length of the square root of 2 over pi, so both horses can reach half the area of the square. So this right here is a half, and this right here is a half as well. We also know that the area of the total square is 1, and the half plus the half is 1. So if they didn't overlap, if these regions didn't overlap, then the horses would be able to reach the whole field. But as they overlap, the area that overlaps must negate the area that they don't overlap. So this area right here has got to equal the sum of these two areas. So if I label this 1, this 2 and this 3, then we can deduce that 1 equals 2 plus 3 using this argument. For part iii, we're shown a diagram of the field and the two horses and the areas they can reach, so the same set that we've had before. On it they've marked an angle called alpha, and we need to show that alpha equals cosine to the power of minus 1 of the square root of pi over 2. And then we need to go on to find the area that neither horse can reach. Okay, so this is our diagram, and we need to find what the value of alpha is. The first thing we're going to do is drop a perpendicular from our diagonal, so up here, that meets with the intersection of these two curves. So this is perpendicular to the diagonal. Okay, so now I'm going to sketch this triangle over here so we can see a bit more clearly. Now that it's a right angle triangle, and this angle here is alpha. We also know that this length here is the square root of 2 over pi, because this is the radius of the circle. So we've got one length. And now we need to work out another of these lengths. We're going to work out this length up here. So this length here is half the length of the hypotenuse of this big triangle. So this is the diagonal of the square. I'm just going to draw this circle out again. So we have this right angle triangle. And because it's the triangle from the square, we know that this length, the side length of the square, is 1. So both of these lengths are 1. And now we can use Pythagoras to work out the length of this hypotenuse. So it's going to be 1 squared, square root of 1 squared, plus 1 squared, which equals the square root of 2. And this length here, which is we said was half of this diagonal, is just going to be half of the square root of 2. So this length is the square root of 2 over 2. So now we can use trigonometry to work out what alpha is. We know that cosine of alpha equals the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. The adjacent side here is the square root of 2 over 2. So the square root of 2 over 2. And the hypotenuse is the square root of 2 over pi. So we can multiply this by the reciprocal. So the square root of pi over 2. And the square roots here are going to cancel out. The square root of 2 is going to cancel out. And we'll just be left with the square root of pi over 2. So now the last thing is the inverse cosine. And this implies that alpha equals cosine to the power of minus 1 of this, so the square root of pi over 2, which is what we're after. Now the question is asking us to work out the area that neither horse can reach, so this area plus this area. But from the previous part of the question, we worked out that the area that neither horse can reach is equal to the area that both horses can reach. So it will be easier just to work this out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this line here. We're going to reflect it. So I'll bring this triangle up here where it intersects with the two curves. 
And if I draw up this line here, the perpendicular, now we have a bigger triangle. So this is perpendicular, and this is the same angle, so alpha. So now we have a triangle with double the angle in here. So I'm just going to draw this out. And this angle is 2 alpha, 2 alpha, and this length is still the square root of 2 over pi. Now we also know that if I draw the, the intersecting line through the middle, then this length is the square root of 2 over 2. And now I'm going to, just going to draw on the top uh, sector of the circle, so we've got like a little ice cream cone shape here. And I'm going to label this whole side here x. Oops, x. And this is the diagram we're going to use to uh, find the, this area here. So if, if we can work out just half of this area, then we can just double it to work out the whole of it. So now we're just going to consider half of this triangle here. So we have two lengths and a missing length. And we can use Pythagoras, because this is the right angle here. We can use Pythagoras to work out the value of x. So x divided by 2, because we just want this half this length here. So we're looking at this triangle here, x divided by 2 squared plus the square root of 2 over 2 squared. So we've got the two shorter sides. This equals the hypotenuse squared, the square root of 2 over pi squared. And this is Pythagoras. So now we can evaluate these brackets. So we get x squared over 4, x squared, sorry, not x to the fourth, x squared over 4 plus a half, and this equals 2 over pi. So I'll bring this onto the other side and multiply everything by 4. We get x squared equals 8 over pi minus 2. Now we can take the square roots and we'll get that x equals the square root of 8 over pi minus 2. But we can simplify this a little bit. So I'm just going to take a 4 out here, factor out a 4, and we'll get 2 over pi minus a half. And because 4 is a square number, we can just take it out of the square roots. So we'll get 2 times the square root, and we can simplify this a bit. I'm just going to cross multiply to get this all on one fraction. And we'll get 2 times the square root of 4 minus pi over 2 pi. And this is x. So we've just worked out what x is here. So I'm just going to wipe this down and write the value of x up here to give us some more space. So now we've got a triangle and a sector of a circle, and we need to work out this segment here. We can do this by finding the difference. So first thing, we're going to work out the area of the triangle. AT equals a half times the base times the height. The base, we just worked out, is x. So 2 times the square root of 4 minus pi over 2 pi. And the height from earlier is the square root of 2 over 2. We're going to get some cancellations. The half and the 2 are going to cancel, and the, the 2 inside the square root and the square root of 2 are going to cancel. So the area of the triangle is just going to be a half times the square root of 4 minus pi over pi. So just to make some more space, I'm going to write this up here and write this out. So the second thing we need to work out is the area of this sector, so the entire area here. I'm going to den uh, denote this a little s, and the formula is a half times the angle, 2 alpha in this case, so times 2 alpha, times the radius squared, and the radius here is the square root of 2 over pi, so this squared. And we can simplify this as the half and the 2 are going to cancel out, we'll get this squared, so we'll have 2 over pi times alpha, and I'll evaluate alpha later on. So this is the area of the sector, and I'll just write it up here again to free us some more space. So finally, the area we're looking for is this entire region here, which is double this little segment here. So I'm going to call this just area. This is our answer we're looking for. So this is equal to 2 times the area of the sector minus the area of the triangle. And this will give us our solution. So if we just sub in, we get 2 times area of the sector is 2 over pi times alpha minus all this stuff a half times the square root of 4 minus pi over pi. Now, this is the half is going to cancel out, and we can simplify this to 4 over pi alpha minus the square root of 4 minus pi over pi. And if I sub in for alpha, which we calculated in the previous question, we're going to get 4 over pi times cosine minus 1 of the square root of pi over 2 
minus square root of 4 minus pi over pi. And this is the desired answer. This is what we're looking for. Now we're told that a third horse is placed in the field and that the three horses are rearranged. One horse is now attached to the midpoint of the bottom side of the field and another horse is now attached to the midpoint of the left side of the field. The third horse is attached to the upper right corner. For part IV, given that each horse can access an equal area of the field and that none of the areas overlap, what length of rope must each horse have to minimise the area that no horse can reach? So this is the diagram we end up with, given that each area is maximised and that none of these areas intersect. So these circles are just going to touch here, but this one is, isn't going to be anywhere near them. So the radius of this circle here is going to be, I've called it L1, and it's going to be the same one as this uh, half circle here. But this um, quarter of a circle, this sector here, is going to have a different radius, a different length, and I've called it L2. We need to work out what L1 and L2 are. We know that each area here is equal to each other, so we can set up an equation saying that pi L1 squared over 2 so this is half the area of half the circle, so this region right here. This is equal to pi L2 squared over 4. So this quarter of a circle up here. And these um, regions are equal to each other. So now I can just cancel out the pi. I'm going to multiply by 4, and we're going to get 2 L1 squared equals L2 squared. So if we can work out just one of these values, then we can work out the other using this equation. What I'm going to do now is draw a line connecting these midpoints right here. So it's going to go straight through the contact of where these circles intersect. And now we've got a right angle triangle. So I'm just going to draw it out again. We have right angle triangle here. And we know that the length here is half because it's a midpoint of this side. And it's the same for this side here. This is the right angle triangle. And we can use the fact that these circles are touching right here and that the radius of each circle is L1. So this length is going to be 2 L1. And now we can use Pythagoras to work out what L1 is. So 2 L1 all squared equals a half squared plus a half squared. And this is a quarter plus a quarter, which is also a half. So we get that 4 L1 squared equals a half. If I divide by 4, I'll get that L1 squared equals an eighth. And if you keep in mind that the square root of 8 is equal to 2 root 2, then we get that L1 equals 1 over 2 root 2. So this is our first length. And for the second one, we're just going to use this equation right here. So we're going to plug it in. We'll get that L2 squared equals 2 times L1 squared, which is an eighth. 2 times an eighth, which is a quarter. And the square root of a quarter is just a half. So we need that L2 equals a half. And these are both the lengths of our ropes for the horses. For the last part of the question, we're told that the horses on the bottom and left midpoints of the field are replaced by goats. Each goat is attached to a rope of length g, so the same midpoint is in part iii. The remaining horse is attached to the upper right corner with length h. So for part v, given that h is between 0 and 1, and that none of the animal's areas overlap, show that g is bounded, by, bounded above by 1 over root 2 root 2, and bounded below by root 5 minus 2 over 2. So we're on to the last part of the question, and this is the diagram we have to think about. So the length of g and h are no longer equal, so these can change arbitrarily. So this is the area the goats can reach, and this is the area the horse, horse can reach. And these areas are maximised. So we're going to want these uh, circles to just touch here. Now we need to bound g above and below. Now if you remember from the previous question, we had that these circles just touched here. And for them to not intersect, they can't go beyond this line here, which was what L, the length of L1 was. So from the previous question, we know that g is less than or equal to 1 over 2 root 2, which was the length of L1. So I'll just write from previous part. Previous part. Okay, now it gets a bit trickier. So we have to use a little trick. So what I'm going to do is use the blue pen and I'm going to draw a line from the midpoint of the bottom side here to this top right corner. So I'm going to pass through like this. Okay, and now we've got a right angle triangle. I'm just going to redraw it here for clarity. Right angle triangle again. So this is the right angle. This is the length of a half because it's half of the side which is 1 and this is 1. And we know that this length here is going to be this length here, so the radius of the goat, which is g, 
plus the radius of the horse, so that's h. So this length here is what, uh, g plus h. And now we can use Pythagoras. So we need some black pen. So g plus h squared equals 1 squared plus a half squared. And half squared is a quarter, 1 plus a quarter is 5 over 4. So if I square root this, we'll have g plus h equals the square root of 5 over 2. Now I'm going to subtract h, and I'm going to get g equals the root 5 over 2 minus h. We're given in the question that h is between 0 and 1, because it's got to be in this side length here. So we can bound this, we can bound g below by if, if we suppose that h was 1, so root 5 over 2 minus 1. And this is the smallest value that g can be. So we can simplify this as this is equal to the root 5 minus 2 all over 2. So if we combine this inequality with this one up here, we're going to get that g is less than or equal to 1 over 2 root 2 and greater than or equal to root 5 minus 2 over 2. And this is the answer we're looking for. So that's how you answer the whole of question 4 from the 2017 MAT exam. Loads of triangles and circles in this question, so make sure you're up to date with your Pythagorean theorem and your trigonometry.